Hey everybody, it's Pete, good morning. I wanted to first um, welcome all of the new people that have joined the bootcamp this month. Uh, we've had a very challenging month to trade, but I think one of the most exciting things is that we have structure and we have a great community that really enjoys helping each other. So the newer members are aided by both myself, obviously, and the other members helping them walk their way through uh, the process of really feeling like they belong. And, and when I say belong, I mean belong in the stock market, belong as somebody who has the opportunity to accept risk in exchange for potential profits. When you start to really have confidence, that's when everything changes. But I want to make it clear that confidence comes from understanding what you're looking at, knowing what you're looking for, and then knowing what you're going to do has nothing to do with predicting what's going to happen next. It's setting up the pieces and building that argument. Uh, but I'm very happy for the new members this month that um, it would have been nice to have started during August, right? When the market was just going straight up every day. But here's the thing. It's very similar to trading during the dot-com boom. You had an opportunity to actually learn how to trade. You had an opportunity to really identify uh, the tough situations, the great situations, and really making a distinction between the two because that actually got you to the point quickly. That's the point. Within a very short period of time, you were forced to say, today's a great day. This is a great hour. This is a great swing trade. Or versus, I see nothing. The stock is in the middle of nowhere. And I understand now because it's so obvious that there's nothing to do and I need to preserve my capital. So you kind of got an accelerated learning month uh, during the month of October. So I just want to thank you for joining the boot camp this month. I'm looking forward to working with you over the next 12 months. Uh, and I'm very proud of the community that we have. The second um, announcement that I'd like to make is if you're watching this video right now and you happen to be watching it on social media, uh, uh, we're actually hosting a free training event designed specifically for beginner traders. Um, this is really uh, the core of some of your basic questions that you might be struggling with. So I'd like to invite you to that event tonight as well. There's no cost. All you need to do is uh, attend, uh, register, and then uh, post your questions in the Top Trading Pros forum. And then we just go down the questions uh, uh, very quickly, uh, but then as much detail as we need. So if you'd like to attend tonight's training, I'd really like to see you there. Uh, just click the link below and register, and then we'll follow up and give you all the info that you need. Uh, today, we're going to discuss a trading tactic uh, that ironically is a really obvious trade set up because the market sold off very hard yesterday setting up an opportunity for me to give you this tactic in, um, in a very uh, obvious way, <clears throat> excuse me, in a way that um, the stocks that meet the criteria will stand out very brightly because the market got hit really hard with selling yesterday. So what we're gonna cover today is we're gonna cover a quick way of identifying relative strength in the market, meaning stocks that are strong when the market sells off so that you can spot ideas to buy while um, the smart money is in those stocks, despite the fact that the market's going lower. So we're going to use two different uh, charting platforms, uh, both of them no cost. So you can just get in there and, and look at these charts at the end of the day. This is not a day trading scan. It's an end of day scan to look for ideas the next day. So we're going to jump into relative strength and uh, I hope that you can be able to use this immediately because it's something that it's one of the easiest ways to say, which stocks uh, had buying yesterday, despite the fact that the market was going down. So it's really kind of a setup that you would use on days that the market goes down to notice those sore thumbs that are sticking out where the market was strong, uh, excuse me, where the market was weak, but those stocks turned around. Now, I want to be clear about this. Just because they meet the criteria does not mean that they're a trading opportunity the next day. You have to take it one step further to say, okay, do these meet the order flow criteria for me to jump into that stock? Uh, tomorrow. So let's uh, let's grab our cup of coffee. Let's get ready and let's hop, hop on over. First, we're going to look at the scanner and then we're going to jump into the charts to see if those ideas are actually trades. So let's head on over to the screen and we're going to start out with Finviz, our favorite scanning software. Uh, everything I'm about to show you, you can do in the free version of Finviz. You just have to sign up, I believe, and just give your name. Uh, so we're going to go over your email, I think is the registration. So you're going to go to screener and you're gonna click over here to all. That's an important part of the scan. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over to my template. So I'm gonna to go to Pete template 2020. And you'll see that when you click all, you have all of this criteria. So my minimum criteria 
is stocks only. I'm not looking for ETFs or anything like that. I'm looking for stocks over $15. So I have a minimum criteria of what I'm looking to buy. Then the average true range is $1.50. So that means from the low to the high, the average is $1.50 or more. That's the average. And then average volume is 2 million shares per day over the last 30 days. So you can see out of all of that criteria, there's only 230 stocks that meet that minimum criteria. We haven't even started sorting them yet based on whether they were up or down. These are just the stocks that meet the criteria that I would want to take a look at. Now, I want to go over here to groups. Uh, is it groups? No, maps, I believe it is. And just to show you, this is what happened in the market yesterday. That's why today is going to be very interesting to see that um, it's such a stark contrast with all of the selling that happened in the market yesterday. So this is yesterday. So we're going to go back over to here and we're going to say, okay, which stocks closed positive by 1% yesterday? So the market was down a lot. We're going to take a look and see yesterday which stocks the market closed positive. So that's the first, the very first criteria. Okay, these stocks were strong, closed above the, uh, above the previous close in a day that the market got hit really hard with selling, but that's not enough. Now we also want to know which of those were green candles, because remember, a stock can close positive from the previous day, but it could also be closing on the lows. That's not what we're looking for. So we're going to go over here to change from the open, and we're going to sort that by 1%. So that means it was positive from the open by 1%, and positive from the previous close by 1%. And now you can see that brought up 10 stocks. Out of all of the stocks on Wall Street, 10 stocks that meet my criteria had relative strength yesterday, and I would consider looking to buy them. So now we're gonna take it a step further and we're gonna look at uh, percentage change. So we're gonna look at percentage change and then we're gonna look at those stocks individually. So you're gonna go over here and click charts. So we wanna see stocks now that have some price history, that have um, minimum criteria for bullish order flow and stocks that meet the criteria with profit potential. So let's take a look at you first and we'll, we'll dig that down just a little bit deeper and see if that meets the criteria. So obviously it's a newer stock, right? We only have a couple of months, not even about eight weeks worth of price action. And what's interesting about this is that it's actually trading near all time highs. So if we put on, uh, let's just say we're gonna use um, a basic moving average. Let's say that we put on, uh, that's the 20 period moving average right there. Let me just confirm that. So the 20 period moving average is here. So price is above the 20. So that's the minimum criteria. So this actually is one that we would consider today. So let's go to another one. Let's take a look at W. I think we'll see a different story here in W. And you can see that W is actually below all the key moving averages. So despite the fact that it had relative strength yesterday, it's not meeting the order flow relative strength. So that wouldn't be one at the top of the list. You could consider it, but it's not one at the top of the list. So let's go to another one. Let's take a look at AEP, which would be, in my opinion, the top one that we'd be looking at today. For obvious reasons, look at that. So AEP is above the 20, it's above the 50, it's above the 200, and it has room to go up to 100. So it meets all of the criteria with the moving averages are in the right order, which is very simple to do. It's got good relative strength. It closed near yesterday's high and it has profit potential. So this would be, now you would need to go into your regular entry signals to determine when you would get into it, but that's the way to first identify trades that you would consider today that if the market bounced, these would be the first stocks you would expect to bounce because of the relative strength yesterday. And you can see that the futures are actually up a little bit right now as I'm recording this video, this would be one of the stocks. So we just had extremes on one side or the other of recognizing whether a stock was relatively strong to the market, if the market sold off, which stocks had buying, and then took it a step further by saying they were positive from the previous close, positive from today's open, both by 1%. And that gave us positive stocks that had green candlesticks. And then we took a look and see where those green candlesticks were with the longer term order flow. And then we took it a step further, which is very simple. You look to the left and say, is there profit potential in exchange for that risk that we have to accept to put that trade on? And we found a couple of ideas. You could take this a little bit further, maybe find a little bit more stocks. But here's the interesting thing. You can do the same thing with weekly price action, with monthly price action, with quarterly price action. You could say, OK, let's just use a month for argument's sake. You could say, OK, over the last 21 days, what did the market do? So let's just say for argument's sake, again, using a very simple explanation, let's say we go to September's price action, September of 2020, 
and we say, okay, September was mostly down during that month. What stocks were positive and what sectors or industries were positive during September so that I could take a look and see which stocks I would expect to follow through in October if the market started to show some relative strength. So you can still trade those stocks even if the market's not bouncing because they showed relative strength. But a lot of what we do is really want to stack the odds. And that's a big part of the boot camp is stacking the odds and getting everything on your side so you have confidence in those trades because you did a good job building that argument. If you take the trades without the market, that's still okay. You just need to work the order. If you wait for the market to turn around and turn to the upside, you already have a nice list of stocks in the time frame that you watch, um, whether it's holding it for a day or holding it for a month or two months or three months. It's the time frame that matters to you based on your goals, your resources, and all of that kind of stuff. So this is kind of a fun way to identify trades where smart money is buying stocks uh, and it really gets amplified when the market trades down and you can see which stocks you could be looking at tomorrow. So it's a fun way to do it too, because you kind of like going on a treasure hunt uh, and finding those ideas. So if you have any questions, leave a comment below the video. I'd love to hear from you. Uh, if you find the channel helpful, I'd really appreciate it if you could um, subscribe to the channel. That would mean a lot to me. Uh, and if look, if you're a beginner trader and like to attend tonight's trading, click down and um, click on that link and register. I'd love to see you there as well. Have a great day.